I was a migrant. So at age of 11, I was sent by my parents with another family uh, to United Kingdom. Uh, so I called them my foster parents and came here. So, and then I was working from age 13. So I did, uh, I remember I used to do a couple of uh, paper rounds in the morning, go to school, come back and do a couple of more paper rounds um, just to get my pocket money uh, for the money that I needed to, to survive on. I even remember the family I came up, came here were uh, also a striving family. And I used to remember I used to sell my lunch tickets to, uh, to uh, get cash. So that's the start uh, of the journey. Uh, and I knew from a young age that I was sent here to better myself, better my family. And a lot of boys like me came over to the United Kingdom back in the 80s with, with other families. So business and me go back a long way. Um, I am actually from a village in Silet in Bangladesh. And I remember my first business when I think I was age six or seven. So I would um, uh, uh, go to under the betel nut tree, pick up betel nuts and sell it in the local bazaar. And I think at age seven or eight, I started growing chickens. I used to take the eggs and go to sell it in the local bazaar. So that's how I started the business, so from a very young age. So start of Eurofood. So when I was 17, I was still um, studying my A-levels and still working in, in the evenings the full time in the restaurant so I can send money back home to my family. And the turning point here was a supplier of prawns, seafood, to the restaurant I was working in and somehow seeds training. And I saw that a real gap because I knew a couple of guys in London, because I'm from Cardiff, uh, who had a, a wholesale uh, shop or cash and carry that they sell these products. Uh, so I've, um, I've called them up, I said, I introduced, because I was only 17 and their family was from, also from the area that I'm from in, in Silet. So I introduced myself and I said, I'd like to come and buy some prawns. So I said, fine. So I went to London. I think I had uh, my first car, which as I said, at age 17, I bought for about 400 quid. Uh, it was a Toyota Corolla. So I went to London. Uh, that's my first time driving to London, East London, actually. Uh, picked up six bucks of prawns, uh, and I managed to get it on terms because I had no cash. And then realized that I cannot go back to Wales because I have no cash to put fuel in, into the car. So the guy who's given me about a thousand pound credit, I convinced him to give me another 20 pounds to put fuel in because he invested a thousand pound, may as well invest another 20 pound. And that's how I started my business. Uh, within about six, seven months, uh, I think on the second year of A-levels, uh, A-level became a bit more difficult. It wasn't getting through my head. So I thought, okay, this, I can't do this. I, I, I got to uh, try something else. So I started my business and started growing the business. And in the beginning, I stayed with the local community, the restaurants that were also from Bangladeshi origin or Indian origin. That's how I grew the business, from nothing. So initial investment of 20 pounds, putting the fuel into my car, going to London, and picking those up, and then bringing back. And then I always put my goals uh, where I want to be in a year's time, or two years time, or three years time. And, and funny thing is when you get there, the goal changes, you know, you, you want to achieve more. Uh, my initial first aim was to supply all the restaurants in Cardiff. Once I've done that, I thought, hang on, maybe I should just do Cardiff, Bristol, and Swansea. And I'll be a, one of the biggest players in the region. And that's how I grew. Uh, and one by one, one by one, the business grew. Uh, and I've always planned, I've always tried to plan 10 years ahead. What will my company look like in 10 years' time? And, and what can I do different to stand out from the competition? Because it's a crowded market out there. Uh, so I do not become a me-too business. And in food business, it's, it's difficult. You cannot patent any, any food ingredients or anything. So it's, it's, it's challenging, it's difficult. Uh, so I um, 
plan the business in such a way and with the goals, and each time I achieve them, I set the next goals. So I'm going to come along where we are today. So from starting in, in 1991 with 20 quid, 20 pounds in my pocket, uh, this year in the UK alone, uh, we've turned over about 135 million. Uh, in the UK, we have about f over 500 uh, colleagues. And because my family tree is from Bangladesh, that's where I'm originally from. So in 2002, I started investing in Bangladesh. So most of the product that now we sell, I produce in Bangladesh. So I process, I have five factories where I process all the foods and I ship them to UK. I have depots in USA uh, that I also ship them to USA. And then I was always thinking of how can I can go forward. How can I go further? So today, Eurofoods is the largest supplier of ethnic foods to the Indian uh, or uh, restaurant industry and the Asian uh, supermarkets. And not only that we produce food, we uh, also farm them. So as well as being uh, producers, we are also farmers now. So I'm, I'm hatching prawns, I'm farming them in my farms, processing them in my factory, then bringing them over here, and we are selling to the super, these Indian restaurants, but we also have ventured into other markets like the multiples. I mean, you can find all our products at ocado.com if you go there. So vastly journey, and there has been a lot of challenges throughout this journey. Uh, and, and COVID was one, uh, which was a, a really big turning point in the beginning. Uh, in March, I thought, oh, this is the end, uh, because all the restaurants closed. Uh, so I thought, okay, this is the end of my business. So um, I was sad, because it was end of almost 30 years of, of career. And I was also happy, and yes, freedom, I don't have to work, in, work anymore. Uh, but I had to somehow find a ways of thriving the business during COVID. And, and we thrive, I think COVID was one of our most profitable years because we served a lot of independents. And in the beginning, first lockdown, a lot of independents were uh, doing takeaways. We then pushed our restaurants to do a lot more takeaways. And the first lockdown, the good thing was McDonald's was closed, closed, KFC was closed, Nando's was closed. So in the independents were doing a lot of business and all those chickens and all the other products which was coming out from those factories and from the farms. And we were the only one open to, uh, to take them in. So we grew our business during 2020, during COVID-2021, by 25, 30%. It was a very good and, and, and profitable year because we always try to act and change to the market, react or try to plan what happens, how you get out of this situation that you're in. And um, one of the reasons I am successful, obviously, uh, because of the fantastic team I have. So uh, in Bangladesh, we have over, over 2,000 employees now who work, and uh, we have a fantastic team over there. We have a fantastic team in the UK. Uh, and yes, um, we have big plans. We, uh, by within the next three years, the business in the UK is forecasted to hit 200 million. And we'll probably, um, I mean, I'm 50. I was 50 last week. So I probably want to get out in another two or three years' time. I can see a friend of mine in the back of the room uh, that I've known for a very long time uh, is here. Uh, and you can hear his story as well uh, a bit after. So that's my story. I mean, there's been a few turning points. First one is when I, when I uh, uh, started the business, COVID, a few other ones. Uh, and yeah, and um, today I came here to say if my story, the way I came to United Kingdom, I was sent as an immigrant just to work in an Indian restaurant, washing dishes and sending money back home. And I did not ex you know, accept that. And I took on businesses. And you know, we have at least 50 to 20 businesses in our group now. And we are very successful. And if I can inspire, inspire one of you to do it's what I have done and, and achieve much, much more than what I, can, what I have done, then it will be a, a good, good day for me, a good morning. Um, I have nothing else to say. Is there any questions you guys have? What did you learn being on Undercover Boss as a turning point in your business? Yeah, so um, Undercover Boss, I've, I've, uh, I've agreed to do that reluctantly. Um, 
obviously business was doing really good in 2020 and I had plans to grow the business much more bigger than I wanted to and then I wanted to go inside because as the business grow you have depots throughout the country now you have 10, 10, 10 sites and not everybody knew me so I wanted to go inside because I always have a meeting with the top level managers and they're, they're telling me their story but I really wanted to go inside the business and speak to the people who are in the shop floor to see what their views are and I've learned lots of lots of things that things that I did not know for example uh, I've learned how what they think of the management I've learned what they think of the canteen I've learned um, I mean I remember that I've bought a lot of turkeys for Christmas and my managers was telling me oh um, we've given to everybody uh, there is no more we had spares and when I go on deck of a boss, I find out that some people who are not receiving the turkeys because the only managers took, took them, they did not give to the staff. And I also found out my most um, uh, emotional one was when I started the start of the business, I was a driver and, and I was a warehouseman and I was the salesman and everything. I, I grew the business and now we have over, over maybe 80 to 100 drivers and we, I, we still expect and we challenge them and I forgot how hard it is today of being a driver and, and what they have to do. Sometimes they have to you know, move half a ton of goods upstairs to first floor, to a restaurant, kitchen or a storeroom. And, and that's what, and then when I found out one of the drivers were thinking or saying to me that the company doesn't care, they expect us to do X, Y and Z. And that really moved me because I care about every single one of my colleagues. Because without them, I wouldn't be here. So I've learned in the shop floor what they've done, what they do, and how they do it, and what challenges they face, and how I can make their uh, working, working uh, experience better. And that's what we invested in. We changed a lot of things after that. Good. Any other questions? Yes. So um, my reason for investing in Bangladesh is not relocating, is, is the, uh, the manufacturing base. So manufacturing in, in the UK is expensive, but not only that, a lot of the foods that we are selling to the Indian uh, uh, restaurant industry are spices or seafood or prawns. Those are, are come from India or Bangladesh or Pakistan. So I chose in Bangladesh because of my route, and that's what we started doing initially. And we are probably one of the most successful companies from Bangladesh. Last, last year, we were the highest exporter of seafood from Bangladesh. And we got a gold award from the, from the government. In Bangladesh, we are the most high, uh, our companies are the most highest paid. And the reason we do that, we want to attract the best talent. So on whatever the average salary is in that industry sector, because we went into few industries, we pay the highest to make sure we attract the best talent and we keep them.